I said, Pum. you're chilling with Ken, yo. Pum. Killing with Ken, yo. I, that sounded like, okay. Okay, what's up, you guys? This is a new um, podcast called Chilling with Kenyo. Anyway, this is just a podcast when I'm at home talking. And today, what I want to talk about is space stations um, and the Space Force. And um, the specifically, I want to talk about one space station that is offering um, leases inside of space. So you can lease you can lease space. You can you can you can lease um, a space in space. You can lease a uh, hundred and ten cubic meters in space. That's one third of a module um, for twenty five million dollars for two months. So that's only twelve twelve and a half million a month. Okay, and guess what? It only costs twenty six million dollars to get there on the Tesla rocket, the SpaceX rocket. It's not the Tesla rocket, but you know it's Elon Musk's rocket, SpaceX. Or Boeing can take you for thirty six million. I think I would rather go with. You know, the Boeing is tempting, but I think I'd rather go with SpaceX. I'd rather go with SpaceX. I definitely wouldn't be the first person to go. But anyway, get my 26 mil plus my 12 million together, 38, 38 mil, 40 mil, let's just call it 40, and spend two years in, in space. Or you don't even have to do that. You can just get $25 million, and you can literally name the location for a year. I would think that would be, that's definitely, I don't think that's going to be hard for them to sell once they get it up there, but I wonder how much it's going to cost. So what company is doing this? This is the, um, this is Bigelow and it's only one company that's doing, you guys might not know this, but I, I'm really into space and this is only one company that's doing it. There's another company that's doing it. Um, and they are doing it for, um, Um, oh, I don't know how much they're, they're, how much it's going to cost, but they're called Axiom Space, and they're doing it too. They're building their own private space station. You can, they're going to have living spaces. They don't say how they're going to do it, if they're going to rent it, or if it's going to be a hotel or what. But they're doing it as well. So this is a thing that everyone's doing, and I'm like, okay, this is going to be really cool. I think there's a lot of things to do when it comes to. Um, you know, living in space. So it's kind of cool that all these companies are trying to get a head start um, when there's a bunch of different space stations. And, you know, it's, it, I mean, the cost might get down to $200,000 or something like that. You can see a lot of people doing it for a lot of different reasons. It could end up being um, a few different careers. It could end up, you know, I don't know if we'll ever need accountants in space, but, uh, you know, um, can you imagine a family living in space? So that's going to be really interesting when they start doing that kind of stuff and people can actually say, hey, you know what, let's let's go up to this space station for like three weeks or something like that. We're going to live on the space station. That is an end-all family trip right there. You do a week in the space station, whoa. That's pretty cool. You know, this whole um, COVID thing is really giving me a lot of ideas about um, space in general and how we handle space. Because going out and living in space, the cool part of it is that you're in space, but then the functional part of it is the same as what we're experiencing right now, which is you can't go anywhere. Um, except for there, you really, really can't go anywhere. So, And I think... That has a lot to do with, you know, our houses and how our families are structured and our access to people um, and our access to comfort. And I think there are lots of innovations along that way. But when I hear a space station is going to be um, big, low commercial space station, it's going to be 
opening up, it really makes me think, yeah, I think there's going to be tons of private um, space stations. I think there's going to be lots of different, you know, types of living situations in general. And I wonder what the method of innovation for that is, but I think one of it, one of them is definitely sustainable living. Um, and I think, you know, space stations are going to have to be ultra sustainable. They have to figure out, you know, how to make money off of it in so many different ways. And I think that is, and how to be efficient. And I think that's a real big challenge in life in general. It's like, how do you, with this unit of space, make it, you know, renewable and profitable and worry about the upkeep and make it, you know, safe and everything like that. And I think that system of connectivity and how do you get connected to electricity? How do you get connected to water? How do you get connected to internet? You know, um, how do you stay connected to people who can check on you? Um, you know, how do you stay safe? How do you know that the people around you are committed to your safety? Um, these are some of the other, some of the other questions that are going to be answered. And it's, I feel like more than anything, it's like a, it's a sociology, it's a sociology, um, hurdle a little bit, the, the whole getting to space, but I think it's going to be very cool. One thing I know that, um, they're also worried, worried about is as far as defense, when it comes to spaceships, you know, there's lots of stuff going on. So if you're orbiting, there's lots of particles. Any one of these particles could hit um, the the station. And the defenses that they have for that are not (laughs) very powerful, in my opinion. You know, like they have layers of uh, metal. So... And they do that. They like the the most recent one that I've seen is they had spaced out layers of metal, and so a particle would go through the first layer, hit some Kevlar, and then there would be a second layer. Ideally, it wouldn't have even been able to get through the second layer anyway. So the Kevlar adds another le- level, and I'm like, that's kind of cool. But I think we need to think a little bit more about how we are going to be protecting ourselves against things that move faster than the eye can see and that could pierce us. And um, and I think really when it comes to defense, that's an aspect of space, everything that we haven't really thought of. And our planet Earth has an amazing defense, which is called an atmosphere. And it's like the atmosphere literally protects us from meteors all day long. Meteors are trying to come straight for our our houses, our heads. Like they're literally shooting from our outer space, coming in. They would be crashing directly, making craters all over the place. And it's like, I know some have gotten through, but that's because they were gigantic. And thanks to the atmosphere, they didn't destroy the whole, you know, everything. They, they, they at least, you know, were diminished a little bit. I don't know the science on that. So, but um, anyway, um, but, you know, we have this atmosphere and I think we really need to think, you know, what is that atmosphere when we're in space? I don't think walls are an equivalent to an atmosphere. You need, you know, a resistant, a resistant fluid almost, you know, that something that can really slow down anything that's coming, whether that be, you know, cosmic radiation, because there might be even cosmic radiations that we haven't discovered yet. And in general, radiation is something that, you know, we're not, we may need to look at, you know, how, how we interact with that. But, um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm thinking about that atmosphere thing. And I'm like, I wonder, um, I wonder if anyone's working on that. Let me check something out here. Arte, oh, I'm also cooking some macaroni. Let me go check on the macaroni, make sure I didn't over. No, it's not over. It's not over. Okay, anyway. 
Oh, you know, it, it might be borderline over. Yeah. Okay. And now Noah wants some some mac and cheese too. Anyway, so artificial atmospheres, that's what I'm going to check on next time. But that's what I was thinking about, guys. And so I wanted to do this chilling at home or chilling with Kenyo. Chilling with Kenyo. That's what I'm going to call this podcast. The Chilling with Kenyo podcast. Thanks for listening. Keep checking in with me. Um, I'm going to be talking about a lot of different stuff. And I'm going to be doing mostly the Chilling with Kenyo podcast and the Cruising with Kenyo podcast. Because those are the two things that I'm doing other than interviews. But most of the time I'm either chilling and doing work while not moving or I'm cruising and doing work while I am moving. So stay tuned for the next, the next, but this art, I got to type it in artificial atmosphere. Um, Okay. NASA proposes building artificial. Okay. I got to do some research on this. I'm not going to try to do that while the podcast is on, but I just thought that was interesting. So yeah, we can, you can rent space stations now. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Long-term goal. One of my long-term goals. I want to do something with space. You know, I want to get out there actually more than something with space. Like if project Ford which is my media company, one day has the leverage to, um, you know, pivot more into space. And I'm going to do it with, you know, content creation and stuff like that anyway. But um, the more I can learn about it and talk about it, um, I'm just I'm just grateful for that. So the more I can do media and if one day we can do something where, you know, launch some, launch a satellite of our own, which I don't take it as that hard, you know, especially if you do like some sort of novelty satellite. And, you know, with what's coming in the future, who knows? We might all get a chance to to launch inflatable houses <laughs> with their own into artificial atmosphere communities. OK, that actually sounds really cool. Someone steal that idea and make the Kickstarter. I'm in on the four hundred dollar level anyway. All right. Talk to you guys later. Peace.